Spirit Airlines isn't wasting any time. Spirit Airlines also wasn't wasting money when it IPO'd in 2011. It was the most profitable airline in the U.S., earning 40% more per plane than any other carrier. In the following years, its stock soared, with flights 30% cheaper than competitors. But after engine troubles, plane delivery delays, and two failed mergers, Spirit Airlines shares have taken a nosedive. And now, after reporting narrower losses for the last quarter, its future is up in the air. So, what went wrong? $5 for a boarding pass, $30 for checked luggage, $3 for water, $1 for animal crackers. Spared Airlines charged for basically everything, allowing it to sell tickets at rock-bottom prices. The only complimentary item on the plane? Ice. Spirit bet there were a lot of customers that regular airlines were kind of leaving on the table because they just can't afford the cost of a ticket. Uh, they didn't give us any peanuts or anything, but <laughs> it's okay. And even at those low prices, uh, Spirit bet it can make a lot of money. From 2008 through 2012, Spirit earned $289 million, with just 40 planes at most in operation. Only two U.S. airlines earned more in the period, Southwest and Alaska Air, which both had far more planes. And three years after going public, Spirit was the most profitable, fastest-growing U.S. airline. Stock prices hit an all-time high. But as profits were reaching new heights, cracks in its business were starting to show. In 2011, Spirit was also the airline with the most complaints. From a customer perspective, like it didn't necessarily have the best reputation. And at the time, you know, their CEO was kind of like, and, you know, no one goes into McDonald's and is surprised they don't see filet mignon on the menu, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Even so still, Spirit execs they said they, they were optimistic. The company had pioneered a new airline business model in the U.S., and for the first five years, it had been successful. But other companies had been watching. As soon as fuel prices dipped in 2015, carriers slashed prices on some tickets, cutting into Spirit's customer base. And Delta introduced a new cabin class, basic economy in an effort to compete with Spirit. You know, people started to get very nervous, like how could Spirit survive given the choice between a basic economy ticket on American Delta or United or a Spirit ticket, why would you still choose Spirit? Other airlines followed suit. United, American, JetBlue, and Hawaiian Airlines launched basic economy seats. Ticket prices fell across the U.S. Stock prices tumbled. For Spirit, something had to change. So in 2016, the company replaced longtime CEO Ben Baldanza with industry vet Robert Fernaro. The old CEO was kind of really aggressive about touting the ultra low cost discount model. And he was famous for like funny ads and you know, he would get in the overhead bin. Had we not implemented this, there's no telling what people would try to put in an overhead bin. To sort of, you know, sell the idea that Spirit was gonna charge you for the overhead bin. So I think they wanted to kind of soften their image and, and go in a new direction. Fornaro set out to address the growing number of customer complaints, reorienting the company toward customer service by lowering fees and delays. He pulled Spirit out of its freefall, but before the company could rebuild, the breaking news, stay at home as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. The airline industry taking a devastating hit. Major airlines preparing to voluntarily shut down. Coming out of the pandemic, people were not really traveling for business in the same way they had before. And the bigger airlines started going after people going on vacation, flying for leisure. And those had always kind of been Spirit's best customers. So no one was surprised when two years later, Frontier, Another budget airline announced a $2.9 billion cash and stock deal to buy Spirit. The deal was announced and everything kind of seemed to be going along. And then kind of out of nowhere in April, JetBlue swoops in with its own offer for Spirit. That offer came in 2022. All cash, $3.6 billion. Shares rose 22%. JetBlue's offer was not solicited, um, and Spirit was really resistant to it. Spirit execs said of JetBlue, I have wondered whether blocking our deal with Frontier is in fact their goal. By July, the Frontier deal fell through, and on the 28th, JetBlue agreed to acquire Spirit for $3.8 billion. 
I talked to the CEO of Spirit and the CEO of JetBlue right after they came, ultimately came to their agreement. And CEO of Spirit, Ted Christie, basically said like, well, business is business. Spirit's problems didn't end with the failed merger. It had ordered expensive new planes from Airbus to run more flights, but deliveries were delayed. Then in July 2023, there was a recall for an Airbus engine. Spirit had to ground some of its planes. Exposure to this issue is very unique and material for us and is having an impact on our margin. Spirit was already in debt, so it sold more than two dozen planes and used that money to pay down $465 million then rented the planes back to keep flights running. Spirit's plan to get out of debt seemed to be working. But on January 16th, a federal judge blocked JetBlue's acquisition of Spirit, citing antitrust issues. That day, shares fell 47%. Even though Spirit is a really small player, you know, the Justice Department felt that it plays a really important role. It serves people who maybe wouldn't have access to travel otherwise, who just couldn't afford to travel on another airline. As of January, the company has roughly $1.1 billion in debt, due in September 2025. There are analysts who think that Spirit doesn't necessarily have much of a path forward and might ultimately have to file for bankruptcy and, and maybe even liquidate um, rather than going through a Chapter 11. But for now, Spirit's share price is suffering. <laughs>